All right, so those are the two options now. Now we want to begin to update the cable actor to this last hook location. And so the way we're going to do that is by splitting this first process into a sequence. So the first sequence will, of course, update the hook. And then the second sequence will move the player accordingly. So this check is similar to this first one here. So there's, it's a polar opposite. We want to instead check if this is not zero. So keep this the same. So let's copy this. And instead, copy this as well. We want to make sure this does not equal zero. We're going to do the same end gate. Do it here first. And check both that you're pressing G and that this last hook is not zero, allowing us to transform the character's location. And we also want to get controller, pull this down here, set that to target for the input key down. Put this on the condition, and there we go. So because the last hook location cannot be directly set to the end location of the cable component, offset last hook and make it relative to the player. And so we want to actually minus this from the actor's location, which will give us the location relative to the actor's position. So get actor location. Then we also want to get actor's rotation and unrotate that vector. And this is all just making it relative. We're making the location and the rotation relative to the actor. Next, what we want to do is V interp. And we're going to make this the target location. And now there's another variable we must create. Or maybe not. So there's another variable we must get from the cable component. And that would be the end location. Now again, if you search and cannot find end location, what do we have to do? We have to make it. And again, I'll post this code on the video itself so that you don't have any problems trying to hack this. And so I paste the code in just like you would do any text. You copy the code and then you paste it within the graph. Next, we want to do is go to current for v interp so that it interpolates correctly. Next, you want to do is grab delta time, drop that into delta time, and we can change this to 4. Actually, let's change this to one. And let's go up to set in location. Now that we have this new location, we can begin the setup. Let's put this to the cable component. Now there's another check we want to do in here. Besides interpolating the position of the cable actor, we want to make sure that this actor is hooked at this time. So we're going to do branch. We're going to drag hooked onto that condition. If it's true, we're going to set the end location directly.
if it's false, we want to interpolate the location. And now there's reasons for this that you will find out soon. Next, we want to get the distance. So now we want to get the distance between the cable's actor's current location from its destination, which is would be the end location. So get vector minus. And end location. Now vector link. And remember that grapple distance earlier, we want to get this and we want to ensure that this length is longer than the grapple distance. What we also want to do is multiply this by 0.99. So it's not exactly the same length. As a grapple distance, we want to make it a slightly shorter, just so we know it's ahead and give it that space. Next, we want to do is a branch which will check this condition down here. So now that we know that the that there's still a link to be updated for the grapple or for the cable link you'll see soon, we want to make sure that set hooked is still true. Next we want to check is the grapple distance equals zero. If it equals zero, meaning it likely has not been set, we want to set the grapple distance, pulling from this variable here. So now we can assume that if it's not zero, it has been set. And so we want to do one more check and we want to make sure that this is less than 1500. If it's less than 1500, we're going to set the solvers to one. And so let's pull here a branch. here. I'm going to get the cable component again and set solver iterations. I'm going to make that one. So with all of that done, let's go to save this and compile. Now you may be wondering, how do we know where the mouse is currently located? Well, that's what we have the custom cursor tutorial for. Make sure you guys go check that out. But I already have that implemented here. You may also notice that my buildings are missing. As I forewarned earlier, there's a chance that this tutorial can crash you for hacking the blueprints in such a way. But that's all fine. It happens. Let's create these buildings again. Probably won't create as many this time. Do 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 do. Or just you can just create a valley of them. It'd be funner. Do 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 do. And let's abuse our duplication tool. 
Come on. Come on. All right. So now that you have everything set up, we want to test this out on the buildings. And so one thing we want to do is actually go under the length from the wall and just make this something crazy like 100,000 for now. And you can adjust it accordingly later on. So let's play that. Bam. Bam. Shoot those buildings. And so you can see what's going on here. Shoot. And of course this updates as you run because it's relative to the player position, not the world. And so the next thing we have to do, now that that's working, is move the character. And once the character gets to a certain point where he's re relatively close to that, the mesh that he's trying to grapple to, he will immediately stick to the wall. And that's more of a gameplay feature that you can either add or remove or choose how you wish. So now let's go back to my character and finish the rest of the changes. So similar to the check that we did here, we want to check that the key is down and that the last hook does not equal zero. So let's just copy that. And this will be another sequence right after the check. And so this be a branch here to finish the chain. Next, we're going to do another branch. And then this branch will be the decision between if the player is close enough to a wall is grappling to. Let's set the actor location. If not, let's continue to launch the actor. And so, let's see if the last hook minus the actor's location. is relatively close to each other. Vector length here. And you want to make sure that's less than a thousand. If it's less than a thousand, we're going to immediately translate the character to the position. If not, we're going to continue to launch the character or add force in, in a sense to the character until it reaches a close enough location where it can immediately attach to the object. So next we want to do is go in here and before this check, or ignoring that, we want to multiply this by delta time. This will re return a percentage of the location here between the actor and the last hit last hook location. We then want to get velocity. Add this. to the percentage that we return from the distance between the last hook and the actor's location. And then we also want to get the direction. Get direction. From the last hook and the actor's location and add this. 
as well. Next we want to get is V enter. And the actor's location will be the current reenter. Actually, we're going to break this, and this will be connected directly to the launch. And then the last hook will be the target. And then we're going to add this to new location. And so let's continue on. We want to comment this and we're going to name it move character to hook. We also want to comment this area. And this one is simply updating the end location. So updating end hook location. So there's no confusion. We can pull this back and then we can call this grapple hook. <laughs> All right, drag this. No, drag this over here. Put this in there. Cool, 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 cool. Got the grapple hook location. Then we change this color. Make it a little blue. Update the hook location. Let's make this a little orange. And then move character to the actual location. Make that a little purple. What's left now is simply to fine tune the fine tune this to the gameplay of your choice. Now this is not exactly like anything in particular. But this will help get you started in a general direction for using the cable actor as a rope or bungee, however you want to look at it, in order to grapple your character to a location. And that you notice my character just sticks. Once he's close enough, he just sticks to a location. We Actually, let's do one other thing. I don't... Yeah, let's update that. We we also forgot to do this one critical thing. And we're going to make this 10. And let's check and make sure I finished everything correctly. Do 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 and let's just compile that and check this out. There we go. Airplanes. No, I'm gonna fall. Nope, I have a grappling hook. And now, again, let's just check that out without the overriding. So it continues to add to the velocity, creating more of a swing or bungee effect. Let's see? Which is fun. Totally for different games. Alright guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Peace.